Yeah, so um, MAS is just basically maximal aerobic speed. So um, it's a number which is meters per second. Um, you can do it through a few different means of testing. Um, you know, you've, we've, we're doing it with the uh, through the bleep test for you, um, just because you haven't got any, you haven't got the rowers or the bikes or anything to use. Um, you can do it through something like a three to five k run, um, or you can do it through. Uh, personally, I do it more through a treadmill. Uh, not a treadmill, sorry, for a, uh, a salt for bike? a rowing machine bike, yeah, for right. a rowing machine, yeah. So I just get mm -hmm. them on the rowing machine 1,500 metres, um, divide their distance by time, and you've got their MAS pretty much. Um, me and Mac are working on a little bit of a little bit of a calculator for the assault bike as well. Um, mm -hmm. So we're working on distance divided by uh, time on the assault bike, just trying to get the, um, the intensities right for that. So we've got a few fighters yeah. going through that at the moment. Um, basically, when you've got the MAS, you, you know, it, it is a good tool for working their, their aerobic, um, aerobic energy system, but you can also use it for anaerobic as well. Mm. Um, so like we were talking a little bit before this, you know, general MAS training, you're looking at one on, one off. So say 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off, um, or you can go up to sort of like two minutes on, two minutes off. You know, you've got the percentages of MAS, so you can work them pretty hard, yeah. you can work them pretty easy get them running through their recovery, whatever you want. Uh, so you can do more active recovery as well, uh, or you can do more aerobic training, uh, aerobic capacity training through their MAS scores as well. And you, you could also go into higher levels of 120%, 130%, and get them in that anaerobic threshold too as well, which is cool. And it gives you kind of like a set baseline. Like you, you, there's no, it kind of eliminates the guesswork, like we said. And that's, that's basically what we're trying to do with this technology is just kind of eliminate all of that, you know, just, you know, bullshit that we've been doing for years that we didn't have the means to, or at least think about doing. And that's what, um, that's what I want to do, man. I want to make sure that we have a, a set baseline of what we can do to, what the fuck are you doing, Dan? So I just got to gotta get a fucking charger out. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like his laptop's going dead. I, I thought I was, um, I thought I was being very inconspicuous and doing it without anyone knowing. But yeah, no, nah, mate, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That shit was not. Nah, I forgot what I was talking about. I really lost my train of thought. Yeah, Jesus. very creepy. Look, anybody that has not is that any good thing? Nah. No. <laughs> One's that a point don't down see here. what's going on. So I just give me two on, seconds. If you're not watching on YouTube, Dan is fucking deliberately fucking just totally changed the way I was actually gonna say something because he, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. What was he doing? Just playing around back there. Yeah, he's playing, playing around back there, grabbing his, his uh, charger for right. his laptop. I my ADD kicked in. I couldn't realize what the fuck was going on at that point. So <laughs> anyways, with that being said, like I said, we're trying, we're trying to utilize the technology not to take away from our coaching ability, but just to give us a better means of understanding the individual. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. And I think um, the way the way Dan uh, put your calculator together to work with the, the beep test, I think that's great. Um, not well in, in our specific circumstance here at Fitline, we don't have the space. We don't have a 20 meter track to do um, mm -hmm. to do the beep test yeah. in. So what, what Dan and I have been working on is, is a variation of the calculator that he gave to you, Phil. Cool. which is uh, to work with the specific pieces of equipment we've got here at Fitline. And mm. um, the assault bike is one of them. Uh, we've got a watt bike, we've got a Versa climber, we, we've got a rower. Um, but the, the beautiful thing about what I've found with the calculator Dan and I are working on is it makes it so easy when you're working with a machine like an assault bike, for example, which gives you uh, your speed reading. It gives you like how fast you're going in our case here in Australia, it's kilometers per hour, right? So with this MAS calculator, we can find exactly which speed that the athlete is, needs to be traveling at to be at whichever uh, percentage of their MAS we need to be working at for a particular interval. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that really takes the guesswork out of things as far as I'm concerned. Would you agree, Dan? Definitely, definitely. And you can correlate that then to the heart rate as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you, if you are taking it from the bike to the rower, where you, which you haven't got measurements on, um, or even if you get down to a track once or twice a month or whatever, you can correlate that to the heart rate so you know exactly where you're working. And just, the, you know, the fighter's perception of the intensity as well, you know. Like a lot of my fighters will know when they're working at 120 percent just from that perception of intensity they'll know when they want to when they're bringing it back to a, say an active recovery at sort of 50 60 percent mas 
they'll know what that feels like. So then you can take that into the into the conditioning sessions, into the even into the skill sessions as well. You know, with their active recovery, if they're sparring, shadow boxing, whatever. Yeah, and also you can also correlate the uh, the recovery, the heart rate recovery, correct? Yeah, that that's it. That's happens. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely uh, put together so, with the heart rate recovery. Yeah. So for anybody looking to get that man and get involved in that, make sure you hit up Dan. And, uh, Dan, give me your give me your um, give me your IG so people can DM the shit out of you. Right are now. you sure you want to do that? Because then I'll just beat you on IG followers as well, Phil. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, so my, so your, I, your your handle will be if you just point like this, Dan. Right? You you just, will see just there, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your your handle's on the screen there for YouTube watchers, but for everyone listening. Yeah, sweet. So uh, IG is Dan Absolute Conditioning, or you might need to put Dan underscore Absolute underscore Conditioning. So it's a bit long, but um, it's definitely worth it. Some really good content. Definitely one of the uh, the best profiles I've ever seen on Instagram. So. <laughs> this fucking guy. Man. This is Dan. Welcome, welcome to the show, son. And welcome this, this show. is why people want to strangle me every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you, when you, when you get like you know your young kids. They they try to like they try to egg you on when you're fucking mad. And this is what he does. He fucking does this shit. Even though Dan's a little older than me too, by the way. There's <laughs> a masterful I'm a, touch. I am the young one in this group right now. You know that. That's right? true. That's, totally. that's pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. but i would i did want to talk about it because like at the end of the day we know it's just a means of a, of a assessing fitness right hmm, and it sure. may not go correlate directly into or transfer directly into you know a fight but what me and dan were talking about you know off air was uh basically like this definitely can go into a psychological factor because the tempos do increase over time and if you're not able to adapt to the tempos and actually adapt to the intensities, then, you know, you're, you're going to see a drop off. And primarily right now, what I'm seeing is that, yeah, the guys can't understand the tempos or they just don't know how to sustain that pace and then increase their pace throughout that time frame. And I think that this is something that that will definitely transfer over in the fight when it comes down to the psychological aspect of the testing. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. So you're talking about the bleep test, not the MAS. You're talking about the testing for the MAS now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking yeah, about the yeah, bleep yeah, test. Yeah. Well, that's that's primarily what I've been using it yeah, for, yeah. you know. Eventually, I, I am going to have, uh, I am going to do the rower. And we'll probably maybe do something like uh, like a uh, an Airdyne, too, because I do have an Airdyne. Maybe we can do something with that. But I think that, um, I think that that'd probably be more important, but... Yeah, the bleep test is just so simple for me, man, because I have that strip of turf that I utilize, and I could just pretty much do it real quick when they come in, get their assessment, and then you know just mark it down, put it in there, you know. So that's what I've been doing, but and that's what I'm seeing is like, man, is just like the increases in tempo, and you're starting to see them kind of die off because they can't they can't keep it up, you know what I'm saying? And once they do it again, I think that it's going to be a little different because they'll understand it. It's the first time that all of them actually did it before, so we'll see, you know. Yeah, nice. Yeah, sounds good. So, just getting a bit of some uh, some technical issues from uh, me moving. <laughs> um, so yeah, so with um, with MAS, I think, and this is what I was going to say off air um, as well. Is it's good because you know, so basic MAS training is you do one on one off, so say fifteen on fifteen off, as I said before. Um, but you can correlate that more towards a fight sort of situation. You know, you can change the intensities quite a bit as long as you've got it well planned out. So you could do say. You know, three sets of 15 on, 15 off at 100%. And then you could chuck in a couple of sets at, say, 130, 140%. So you're upping that intensity for a little, for a short duration, for, say, a minute, minute and a half. And then you're pulling it yeah. back down to, say, 80, 90%. And then drive it back up to 140, 150%. And then that can kind of correlate more to the fight. Because obviously in a fight yeah. game, nothing, nothing's ever determined. You know, no, you're not going to be at predetermined intensities or anything like that. So... You can work yeah. it in like that, and it's not not really MAS training, but you go into the MAS uh, intensities and to oh. their to their protocols. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. And that's 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 the thing. That that's why I like about the calculator is that I can I can look at the percentages, and then I can correlate what I want to do from there. Especially also in auto regulation techniques too, because at the end of the day, I still got to make sure that they're doing that. But if we have to, if like I said, if they it, let's say 
and we'll put it all together. If the HR, HRV reading is terrible that day, then maybe I will have to bring them down to 60% of that MAS. Yeah, but we're still getting yeah. something. We're still getting something, right? And there's no guesswork there. So now we're eliminating, oh, did he get a stimulus adaptation or was it – was it conducive to what we're trying to accomplish at this point in time? It is because we're taking what we've seen from a data standpoint, and then we're also getting that technical aspect of the objective indicators from the HRV and just correlating it all together. So I think that that's fucking, you know, bar none is probably going to be the best thing for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. if you can, if people can understand that and start to really put this into play, and not to say that this is like I told you is going to take away from your coaching ability, but it is a good tool to use to help you along the way as you're you know progressing your fighter throughout camp and throughout the years the another th another thing that it does do for me is i run my systems off concurrent aerobic systems throughout the week because at the end of the day they need to get all this in and we don't have the luxury of actually training aerobically for a standard period amount of time whereas if they were in the olympics or say something like that where we have those long macro cycles that we can actually work on um, these guys are, are fighting two, at the most, three months apart. So we have to make sure that they're getting as much as they possibly can in. And if we don't <clears throat> correlate that with percentages or at least have a means to understand our auto regulation and then also periodize it to where it's going to be conducive for them, then you're, end up, you're probably going to end up overtraining them.